So I want to come back to our questions. How does diversity affect literacy education? That is our overall research question. But that's such a broad question that we want to narrow it down. And we can narrow it down a lot of different ways, um, which is why I asked you to start getting familiar with the conversation and to share what you learned with other people on the discussion board. The other thing that we want to think about um, is literacy education is super important. And it's important for us, um, me as instructor, and you as students to raise your voices. These are issues that affect you a great deal. They have affected you a great deal. And so we wanna raise our voices ethically with research to speak to um, an audience that of educators and students who need to be aware of these issues. And we don't wanna call them out um, on things that they're doing badly is like, oh, you racists. No, we wanna call them in because ultimately what we want is literacy education to improve. And so, um, so that's where we're headed today. I think you all noticed I finished grading the essays and um, some of you may have questions about your score. Um, don't hesitate to talk to me. There's a link on our homepage that you can sign up for office hours. Sometimes students are reluctant to meet with me. Um, professors can actually seem sort of distant, especially right now. You don't get to see me in person. You don't see that I'm not even five feet tall that I'm flustered, well, you do see that I'm flustered when I can't use technology, but you don't see me. You don't see my body language. You don't see how I interact with students. And so I can seem super distant. Um, so getting to know me in my office hours is a good thing. Also dialogue opens up understanding and it can help you overcome questions that you have on our assignments, on projects that you're setting out to. Um, you can do that with a peer or a tutor, but they definitely can't read my mind. Some of the tutors have had me as an instructor. Um, and so I don't know, they can sort of read my mind, but that's a whole other thing. Also, I'm generally pretty nice. So meeting with me isn't, you know, like once you get over the weirdness of talking on Zoom or in my office back when I had an office, um, um, the awkwardness goes away. So, um, so now I wanna return to Baron and Graham and I wanna talk about where we left off on Wednesday. Here is their project statement. Remember, Teresa Tony said that academic writers announce the plan for their paper and indicate why it matters or its value. And here is them announcing their project and they also announce their argument. We read this in the remainder of the article, we reflect on our experience of moving in one writing center from a theoretical commitment to productive diversity to actual social change. While we cannot provide a neat five-step process for others to follow, we will structure our discussion around four of the lessons we learned from this experience. In deliberately trying to address race in our training over the last six years, the biggest challenge was accepting that we were a lot further from the goal of productive diversity than we imagined. The personal transformations that productive diversity calls for do not happen easily, nor do they occur by reading a book. Addressing race in a writing center is not a one-time event, but a continual process, one that we remain engaged in today. Now, 
based on this sentence, this series of sentences, this final paragraph that precedes the four lessons, what is their project? What is the work that they are setting out to do? And what is their argument? I'm gonna stop the share and I'm gonna send you into your groups and I want you to answer that question. Um, somebody from the group should probably copy paste um, that slide deck. And, um, and I want you to take, uh, let's say, um, let's say three and a half minutes and um, talk about what is the project, what is the work that they're doing in this article and what is their argument, okay? I'm opening up the rooms, take note of your number. You don't have to write anything at this point. We'll get to that later. So somebody from room five, um, what is the project here? What is the work that they're setting out to do in the article? Grace? Grace? Group five? Um, I can talk. Okay, yeah, Drea. Um, so we said like that diversity is something that's always um, something that should be talked about a lot and like to have this process continued because I really like the way they said that it's not like a five-step process. It's like always continuous and it should always be brought up. So that is their overall argument. That is their argument is this is not an easy process. It's gonna be a long-term process that needs to be ongoing. Um, yeah, that's the argument. That's the main point. What is the work that they're setting out to do in this article? Obviously, they're going to build that argument, but they announced the plan for their paper. They set up, here's what we're going to do in this paper. Um, Jenna, what are they, what do they say they're going to do in this article? Um, they kind of talk about how, uh, they're just going to focus on productive diversity and like focusing on having that conversation over and over again until it's like not an issue anymore, which is going to take a really long time. Okay, so we're back to the argument again. It's like, here's this goal of productive diversity. It's going to take a long time. That is their main point. They also identify here's what this article is going to do. It's kind of like they give you an outline for the direction of the paper. What is that outline? David? I'm so sorry. I missed the question for a second. What was that? What is their project? The work that they're doing in the article, not the work that they want to do in their writing center, but the work that they're gonna do in this article. My group basically discussed that they're they're trying to show that it is possible through like through them, they're sharing their experiences to show that um, <clears throat> it can be done. But like 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 you said, it will take a little while. <laughs> so we're still back to the argument. So let's take a look at this again. In the remainder of this article, 
we reflect on the experience of moving in one writing center. So here's what the article will do. It's going to reflect on the experience. Like what was it like to move from a theoretical commitment to productive diversity and to actual social change. So what was the experience like? We're gonna talk on that. So that's part of what they're gonna do. And then they say, we will structure our discussion around four of the lessons we learned from this experience. So this is their project to reflect on the experience and to discuss what they learned from that experience, in particularly related to the challenges. So there is a difference between their main point, which is that personal transformation that productive diversity calls for doesn't happen easily and it doesn't happen by reading a book. It's a continual process. That's their argument. The project is the work they set out to do, which is to reflect and describe, discuss for the lessons they learned about how to do this well, which is a little different. Um, and I'm not surprised that this was challenging, but when you're reading an article, you wanna be able to identify the project, what are they doing in this paper, and what is their main point. Um, this will be important as you move forward with your research. So the next time you meet with your groups, um, I want you to ask yourself this question. What do, I should have said, what do they assume their readers believe about diversity? Because there's two of them. Um, Baron and Grimm, the Nancys, they assume their readers share some beliefs with them. And somebody who does not share these beliefs already at the beginning of this article are probably not going to accept the argument. So I want you to think about what do they assume they believe about diversity? What do they assume their readers believe about equality? What do their, they assume their readers assume about racism? And any other beliefs that you think they assume their audience has based on the reading. Questions about what you're gonna do now. Okay, this time I want you to write on the slide, okay? So you've got a copy of that. These are beliefs that they hold. Don't just, they, you know, like don't just say they believe in equality. What do they believe about equality? I want you to be really, really specific about these underlying assumptions, okay? And now you get to go back to your rooms. Again, about three minutes. Who's in group seven? Yeah. Yeah, Connor, you want to talk about this? Uh, yeah, sure. So for, at least for mine, mine's the first one in that they assume the readers have an interest in diversity, is that uh, there's, for me, I, it seemed like their assumption was that people, to put it bluntly, care about fixing diversity. Like personally, I do, and I believe in that, but I feel like that's one big thing is because there are a lot of people around the world and in the US that don't have an interest in that and believe that how things are right now, it's fine. Yeah, and, and, 
and this would have been because um, we're thinking 2002. So it's a, even a little bit more complicated there. Um, so, but they're definitely assuming their readers are interested in diversity. And they don't make an argument about the way we know that is they don't make an argument about why diversity matters. And if they're not making those claims about why it matters, then they're assuming that their readers believe it does. And so, you know, like, kind of the absence of evidence on this is ju they're just assuming everybody thinks this. Um, and the same thing about equality. Um, equality isn't something that should be debated. All students should be treated equally. Um, some students haven't been in the past. They're not making that argument. They're just saying it's the norm. And so they, you know, like they're not developing those ideas. Uh, let's, this has some really interesting ideas too. It's not that the others don't, but these have some things that I wanted to talk about. Uh, particularly this one, they assume the readers value diversity in educational contexts. Um, they assume their readers strive to reach equality in the writing center. And they assume that the readers believe there is room to improve. Let's talk about that third one, because the first two are really similar. Um, talk to me about why you know that. Somebody from group five. So um, I was the one that wrote that part. Basically, my thinking was that if if someone was to say like, there is institutionalized racism in America, there is systemic races, racism in America, there are a lot of people that would disagree with that statement, those statements. Um, and if you disagree with those statements, you're probably not gonna be interested in reading about this or reading this article because you're just gonna think it's all um, Sorry, I was, I was trying to think of a better word than like, you're, you're going to think it's all bullshit. Um, I'm, I'm fine with that phrase in the class. <laughs> so that, I'm sorry, that's like the only word I can think of. But yeah, that was my thinking with that. Yeah, and, and they wouldn't be interested in reading about how to improve diversity in the writing center or other educational contexts which I think is, is the connection here. Um, obviously they're focused on the writing center because they're writing center directors, but they're also focused on the wider university and um, most specifically literacy education, I think is an important idea. Um, group four, uh, they, you say some readers, they're assuming that readers may be ignorant about subtle racism. Why do you assume that? To talk to me about, you know, like what in the text suggests to you that they're um, going off that assumption about their readers? Um, so we were kind of saying that she shares a lot of personal stories, like both authors share stories that like in the writing center of experience that they've had where they see that tutors or students experience these subtle hints of racism. Um, a lot of people, and they're assuming that people may not know because they're not tutors. So um, they're like sharing their stories in that way. Um, additionally, like I kind of like the last point, but it's, it's uh, for some reason it's not showing up on the slide, but um, we said that, assume that at we, uh, the people reading assume that ethnicity or culture does, don't know much about, or they assume that ethnicity and culture doesn't have a lot to do with writing, so the writing center can't have diversity problems. Um, we were thinking that they may be a little bit ignorant or just like not knowing about the situation, especially in the writing center. Yeah, I, I like how you point to the narratives that they include that illustrate the subtle racism um, experientially um, because those are really valuable. 
we can read statistics, we can read theorists, um, but when we read stories, we feel it more deeply. And they wanna make sure that their lived experience is part of the equation. Um, uh, one other thing that I noted about these underlying assumptions, um, the ones that your group named, is they also include a lot of details about that subtle racism, definitions for racism, um, definitions for colorblindness, which was not, I mean, it is widely talked about now in 2020, but it was not widely talked about in 2002. I do understand that some of you were born in 2002, so I wouldn't expect you to remember, um, but I do remember. And I had never heard about colorblindness except in a positive light back in 2002. And so they've got to define these things. They've got to, um, they've got to, yeah, they're assuming that some of the, some of the readers might be ignorant. And so there they're trying to um, give some evidence on that. Um, I, I, this one, um, talk, to, talk to me group three about assuming that their audience likely comes from homogeneous backgrounds with little interaction in diverse settings. All right. Um, I'm the one that wrote on that. Um, I wasn't completely sure on this, but it kind of um, seems like they assume they're speaking to readers from homogenous backgrounds that like are just like plain white mainstream, like people who grew up and like only exposed to that setting. And I, the reason I think this is because they give so much like evidence with the narrative saying, um, like hey this is subtle racism or like this experience and like if they were writing to a diverse back like group of people a lot of them would already know that and they wouldn't have to like explicitly state like this exists here's an example of it a really really good commentary um and and yes even now um when i go to a writing center um conference most of the writing center directors, a large percentage are white and mostly white women um, for some strange, strange reason that probably has a lot to do with literacy education. Um, it's changing and, but it still, it's still got a long ways to go. Um, and um, I'm, things that you wouldn't know because you're not, um, you haven't been to these types of conferences, but at the same time, um, I'm really, really glad that you saw these things. Um, I know that there were a lot of really good comments, but I want to get to the next thing I want you to work on. And um, I want you to think about the ideas that they um, they explore a lot of ideas in the introduction in order to establish the importance of teaching productive diversity that leads to social change in the writing center. And I asked you to do some research on this. And so, um, we're not going to finish this exercise because we only have 12 minutes. But what I would like for you to do is get into the same groups. And then if you could um, put your names on the slide, that is your group. And then on Wednesday, I'll return you to the same group. But I want you to introduce the topics that they address. For example, they address colorblindness. Um, they address productive diversity. They address a lot of things. Um, name as many topics as you can and, uh, and think about the things that you read in the journal articles that you read, because I think that these are, I 
specifically chose articles that had similar topics or that took an idea that Baron and Grimm had and then expanded it. And so this is the part that I was most nervous about, but what are some potential directions that you could go in? Is it um, diversity of language? The lack of, you know, like switching around from, switching away from standard American English, which they allude to. Is it, um, you know, like tutor training? Is it, you know, like think of all of these. And re remember, we're extending her argument. We're saying, here's their focus on racial diversity, but we also want to consider other types of diversity. So, you know, like, what did you write? What did you read about? Put as many ideas on these slides as possible. And, and then we'll come together and you'll continue the discussion on Wednesday. So back into your groups. Um, I'm gonna give you about six minutes Alexa, set timer for five minutes. Back maybe. Um, I have changed the um, settings on that slideshow just so nothing else can change. It's kind of freaky when everything disappears. You'll be able to add later on. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the things that you all came up with. Um, they explore lots and lots of ideas. Um, Color blindness, productive diversity, systemic racism since the creation of the writing center, racism in the teaching of literacy. Those are kind of similar. Um, group one, talk to me a little bit about like why you chose the things that you chose. Somebody in group one? Um, so for the ones that I wrote down, I mainly put them down because of the article that I read um, last week. Um, and those are kind of some of the ideas that he uh, expanded on in his, in his article. Which article did you read, Ashley? Um, the one about the two point of views of the, the two Mexican American students. Yeah. And yeah. Very good. Um, it's 11.49, which is a kind of what I expected. I'm going to, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tr look these over and I'm going to narrow them down into topics that you raised. Um, I'll probably have more than, um, more topics than what you end up with, um, but you'll choose your groups on Wednesday. Um, a couple other things I want to point out is sometime tomorrow you'll see a prompt for the annotated bibliography that you'll develop together related to your topic and you'll see a sample. Um, and then next Monday, a librarian is going to come into our classroom and talk about how you can do research through the library database in order to find the sources, books, journal articles, newspaper articles, those types of things that will help you explore these ideas. Um, it's 11.50, I'm done. And you all can go to your next class or just be done for the day, whichever it is. I'll stick Thank around you. for a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Thanks for everyone. Day.